In this video, I would like to examine the ring Z10. And if you don't remember what Z10 is, this is just the set uh, 0, 1, 2, all the way up to uh, 9. So we'll say 8 and 9. So these are the elements of the set. The operations here we're using are addition, mod 10, and multiplication mod 10. And if if you're not very good with modular arithmetic, let's do some examples here. See how things work in this ring. So let's say we wanted to add together um, 5 plus 9. These are two two elements of this of this set. And we're adding them together under addition mod 10. Well, to, to add under addition mod 10, we're just going to add these like we would normally. So this 5 plus 9 is 14. And then we need to reduce this mod 10. So uh, the way I like to think of that is just take off as many 10s as you can without going negative. So from 14, we could take off one 10 without going negative. So this would become 4. So in Z10, 5 plus 9 is equal to 4. Um, let's try multiplication. 5 times 9. Well, we're going to multiply these like normal. So 5 times 9 is 45. And then we're going to reduce 45 mod 10. So we're going to take off as many 10s as we can without going negative. Um, from 45, we could take off uh, 4 10s. So 45 just becomes 5. And so in this ring, in Z10, 5 times 9 is 5. Okay? So hopefully that gives you a sense of, of how things work in Z10. Um, I'd like to take a little, little detour now. And let's think about, I'd like to think about how we, um, how would we go about solving a quadratic? This might seem a little bit of a tangent, but um, bear with me. So let's say we wanted to solve x squared plus 3x plus 2. I wanted to solve this for its roots. Well, the first step would be just set this equal to 0. So we'd say this is equal to 0. And then we just want to solve for x. So our next step would be to, to try and factor this in a way that... Uh, factor it into um, a product of linear, linear polynomials. So we would factor this into, looks like... Um, x plus 2 and x plus 1 and that's still equal to 0. Now we have a, a, a product of two things that equals 0. Well the only way that can happen is if either either this one is 0 or this one is 0. So then our next step would be either x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. And then from there we could just solve each of these for x and we would have our two roots. So then x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to negative 1. So negative 2 and negative 1 would be our two roots to this. Now the, the, the step that I want to focus on in this video is, is this one right here. Going from here to here we said that we have a, a product of two, um, two non-zero things, and it's equaling zero. And so since, since it's equaling zero, then one of these has to be zero, because that's the only way that you could have a product of things equaling zero. And so with that said, I'd like to go back to Z10 now. And let me ask you a question. Is, is there any way that we could take two things in Z10 um, two things that are not zero, so any of these except zero. Is there any way we could take two of these that aren't zero and multiply them together to get zero? So, so in other words, um, if A and B are elements of Z10, um, such that, such that um, A is not zero, B is not zero, but 
times b is equal to zero. And and I'm I'm asking you, is there a way we could find an a and b that that make this work? And your your first thought, if if you're thinking like we did over here, your first thought would probably be, well, no. I mean, if we have a product of two non-zero things equaling zero, that that's like that's like a contradiction that one of them has to be zero if if it's equal to zero. And you would be right if you if we were dealing with this over here. But we're looking at z10 here. So let's let's see if we can make this happen. Um, let's say let's choose um, let's say five and four. Let's multiply these together and see what happens. So remember this is multiplication mod 10. So we're going to multiply these together like normal. This is 5 times 4 is 20. And then we're going to reduce 20 mod 10. So from 20 we could take off two tens without going negative. So 20 is just 0. But now look, we took we took uh, we took 5 and 4. Those are two non-zero elements in this ring. We multiplied them together and we got 0. And, and now you, you might be thinking that this is this is kind of strange. I mean, your whole life you've kind of been dealing with this sort of thing, where if we had a, a product of two things equaling zero, then one of them had to be zero. But now I'm telling you, if we have a product of two things equal zero in Z10, then they don't they don't both have to be zero. And um, and and so that I mean, clearly there's something different about what's going on over here than what we're doing in Z10. And so I mean. What's what's I mean? What makes Z10 so special that that it, it allows for this thing, this kind of thing to happen? And that's mostly dealing with our operation here. It's addition or it's it's multiplication mod 10. And so this this situation, um, the situation has a name. So when this kind of thing happens, we would say that the five and the four are called zero divisors. Zero divisors. So a zero divisor is is um, two non-zero elements that when when you multiply them together um, you get zero. And I mean are, are these the only two zero divisors in Z10? Well I'm sure we could find some more. Let's look. Uh, let me choose a color for this. Let's, let's go blue. I'll go green again. Um, let's try, um, I don't know, uh, 8 times 5. If you multiply 8 times 5 together, that's just 40 by in, in, a, in a normal multiplication sense. But then we need to reduce 40 by mod 10. So from 40 we could take off uh, 4 tens. So this becomes 0 again. So then we would say that uh, the 8 and the 5 are also zero divisors of Z10. And I'm sure you could find more in here. I mean, that I, that's not all of them, but I'm not going to go through and, um, and and name each one of them, but uh, that, would, that would probably be a good exercise if you want to do that. Uh, so in, in, in general, um, zero divisors are kind of a, a bad thing. They're, they're kind of an undesirable trait for a ring to have. And so um, uh, there are rings out there that don't have zero divisors. I mean, there's plenty of them. Um, let's say R. Um, R is a ring without zero divisors. Um, Q is a ring without zero divisors. I mean, there's no way you could multiply two real, two non-zero real numbers under regular multiplication and get zero. Um, same thing with rational numbers. Um, also, Z is is another ring that doesn't that this situation could never happen in. Um, so what we would we would actually call these um, integral integral domains. So these three are examples of integral domains, and a, the actual the actual definition for that would be oops would be um, a a commutative ring. Commutative ring with unity, so with unity, um, and commutative ring with unity and no zero divisors. No zero divisors. 
So some more examples of things that are not integral domains. Um, things would uh, things would be like um, z4. Z4 is not an integral domain because you could multiply you could multiply together two times two, and that would under under multiplication mod four that would give you zero. Um, also maybe z um, z14 not an integral domain. Um, I don't know z z1204 is not an integral domain. I think you see the pattern here. Um, in general z uh, sub c where c is composite will not be an integral domain because if it's composite then it's going to factor into you know two things that are not one uh, not one or c so you could say that you know a times b is equal to c and in this ring c is actually zero so you'd have two non-zero elements multiplying to be c um, in also in general um, z sub p uh, will be an integral domain if p is prime so um, examples would be you know z7 that's an integral domain um, you know z z13 it's an integral domain so all of these here all of these here that i've listed these are all integral domains these ones are not they have zero divisors the ones down here do not have zero divisors so this kind of situation could never happen in any of these and likewise, um, our, our situation up here with, with the polynomials, this was actually an integral domain. And this, I mean, that, that might seem kind of weird to think of um, polynomials as a ring, but um, we're, al we're actually going to get there in a couple of videos. These are, these are actually polynomial rings. Polynomial rings. But before we get to that, polynomial rings, before we get to that, I'd like to introduce a, a, a different kind of ring from, from polynomial rings. And, I will do that in the next video, so see you soon.